Hi guys, good morning, good evening, depending on the time zone you've joined us from. Uh, I'm Ishara and I'm the Product Marketing Manager for WS2 ITNG Server and I'm very excited uh, to introduce you to our presenter today and also uh, this topic that we want to talk to about. Uh, so our latest version of the WS2 ITNG Server was released just about a month ago and if you have been following um, you know, updates about the ITNG server you may have noticed that uh, we now provide passwordless authentication and that is going to be uh, the topic of uh, our webinar today we will look at things like evolution of authentication the need for passwordless authentication um, and how you can achieve this with WS20 server so if you're working in a company that is looking at things like uh, you know building a customer IAM solution uh, or you know security is extremely important these days because of all the security vulnerabilities and things like that. So uh, a method that is very um, user-friendly is something that you know we all could do with. Uh, so let's dig in. I would like to introduce you to my colleague. Um, Sachin has been with uh, the WSO2 team, Identity Server team, for almost two years, and she is someone who spearheaded this whole effort of implementing passwordless authentication with uh, the WSO2 ID server. So over to you, Sachin. Okay, um, hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Sachin Vettasenka from WSO2 Identity and Access Management team. So our topic for today's webinar is passwordless authentication with WSO2 Identity Server. Okay, uh, before diving deep into this topic, let's look at why and how passwordless authentication came about over the past years. Well, the reason for the emergence of passwordless authentication is passwords. Passwords are called shared secrets, although they actually cannot be kept as secrets. So uh, amongst today's methods of authentication, the old fashioned technique of using username and password still remain as the most prevailing mode of authentication. However, passwords are vulnerable, vulnerable to a vast variety of attacks such as um, root force attacks, replay attacks, social engineering, phishing, or malware. On top of all this, users hate passwords. To prevent breaches, users are typically encouraged to enter passwords that are unique, long, and complex with combinations of letters, numbers, and special characters. But it's really hard to remember these complex alphanumeric passwords and also hard to get them right. They cannot be reused everywhere and users are normally urged to change them time to time. So um, all these, or although these passwords also, are, although there are password managers out there, how many of us are using them? And is it really, use, really easy to use them? So um, not only users, but IT admins also hate them for the same reasons. And also, this impacts highly on support costs to have them reset. So, who actually loves passwords? Well, of course, only hackers do love passwords. Over the past couple of years, you have most probably seen the statistics that 81% of data breaches are caused by compromised, weak, and reused passwords. Well, nothing much has changed in the last year as well. According to 2019 data breach investigation reports of Verizon, they have confirmed that 80% of hacking-related breaches still involve compromised and weak credentials. And 29% of all breaches, regardless of the attack type, involve the use of stolen credentials. And for 32% of all successful data breaches, um, phishing has been the primary weapon. So um, then came multi-factor authentication and adaptive authentication to the rescue. However, web users enable these features. Mostly, this can be owing to the lack of knowledge or the number of steps and complexity involved in interactivating these. And also, 
uh, still there are some cases where attackers have bypassed multi-factor authentication via phishing attacks and man-in-the-middle attacks, which does not help this either. Although these security measures have reduced the risk of using passwords alone, passwords still remain weakest link. So, so, um, so this is where passwordless authentication with FIDO2 comes into play. With passwordless authentication, you actually don't have to enter either your username or password for login. You just have to register your security device or biometrics and simply login. So what is really FIDO2? FIDO2 is a phishing-proof passwordless authentication protocol developed as a between the World Wide Web Consortium's WebAuthn specification and the FIDO Alliance's Client Authenticator Protocol specification. FIDO2 FIDO offers a single-factor passwordless sign-in experience, which eliminates the hassle of remembering and typing usernames and passwords. So utilizing public key cryptography, FIDO2 has replaced passwords with biometrics or plugin authenticators, security keys to help create a better user experience. Let's look at the difference of traditional authentication flow with passwords and the passwordless authentication flow. So what happens in the traditional credential management is that a password is created and stored in a server, which is called the relying, which is called the relying party during the sign up or registration process. So when it comes to the login or authentication process, the relying party matches the password given by the end user against the previously stored password. But FIDO2 has eliminated this model of storing user credentials in a server, whereas it makes, where at, where at, uh, it makes sure that the cryptographic login credentials never leave the user's device and are never stored on a server. The security model has eradicated all sorts of password theft and the risks of phishing attacks. Let's look at how actually FIDO2 used asymmetric cryptography to authenticate users in a passwordless manner. There are three main factors that drive this whole process. They are the FIDO2 authenticator. That can be the biometrics, security keys like YubiKey, smartphones, USB tokens, and Apple's Touch ID, and Windows, Windows Hello. And also the second factor is the client or the browser that operates as the mediator. And the third factor is the relying party for, for an example, WSO2 identity server. So utilizing all these factors, there are two main flows for FIDO2 passwordless behavior. They are the registration flow and the authentication flow. In the registration flow, when the user begins the registration process, the relying party sends out a challenge. So the user agent, which is the browser, responds to this by using the WebAuthn API to prompt the user's authenticator to create a new key pair. So at this point, a relying party specific credential key pair, which is the private key and the public key, is generated in the authenticator. The private key is used to sign the challenge generated by the relying party. From this key pair, the user agent sends the public key, a credential ID, and the signed challenge over to the relying party. 
the private key never leaves the authenticator. So in the authentication flow, the user makes the request to log in where the user is prompted to provide a PIN or biometric. This triggers the authenticator to send an assertion to prove that the user processes, processes the private key. Then the relying party validates the assertion with the public key such that it will allow the user to log in upon the successful validation. The most important factor that enables passwordless authentication with FIDO2 is the concept of client-side resident public key credential source or the resident key, which is stored in the authenticator instead of being encrypted and stored on a server. With these resident credentials, the authenticator is able to select the appropriate credential private key Let's say for an example, a user registers to uh, registers new credentials for the relying party with the ID WSO2.com. So any subsequent authentication request with that relying party will use the saved resident credential to find the corresponding credentials private key. So, um, so as a trial passwordless authentication with FIDO2, all you need to have is an authenticator that supports resident keys. So um, we talked about how passwordless authentication came about and how its internals works. But why would you really need to have passwordless authentication? Well, of course, with passwordless authentication, you don't have to remember passwords anymore. And it is invulnerable to phishing attacks. FIDO2 makes sure that the website the user is trying to sign in is actually the one they think it is. The protocol binds a key pair to the website. So um, therefore, it's, it's impossible to use previously generated uh, credentials during so let's say um so um to use the previously generated credentials during registration to a site called a to use when you are signing on to a site called b and all uh, and uh, all in all this ensures user-friendly authentication with a reliable single factor for authentication furthermore it also en ensures authenticators for cloning detection. On the occasion when someone steals your authenticator and clones it, the protocol is built in such a way so that it can detect if the clone is, re, re, uh, if the clone is used. And also, this is of paramount importance for you who are building up a CIAM solution, which is a customer, a customer identity and access management solution. So um, let's see how WSO2 Identity Server supports passwordless authentication. For this, I will take you through a simple demo on how this can be done using the latest release version of Identity Server. So for this, I have already created a user account for myself. So I will log in to the WSO2 user portal with that. Okay, so now I'm in the user portal and logged in with my account. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to register my device. So I'll go to the security tab. And then I'll click on this. So here I'll be using the built-in sensor of my laptop.
it's the Mac OS Touch ID, so I can give in a name here. So the device is now successfully registered in our user portal. I'll log out from the user portal. I have configured the sample application to use Fido for authentication. So what I'll do now is I will try to log into this application with passwordless authentication. This will prompt for me to give the uh, touch ID. So I will select my account. And you can see that I have logged in to my uh, sample application. So this is simply how uh, passwordless authentication works with WSO2 Identity Server. Okay, so uh, now we have come to the end of this webinar. If you have any questions, guys, we should be able to take them. So do let us know on the slide panel if you have any questions about passwordless authentication or anything during the presentation. Uh, well, there's a question. Uh, does it work with Microsoft Secure Key? Well, if you are meaning about uh, Windows Hello, so we have tested that uh, we can use uh, Windows Hello for WSO2 Identity Server for you to use a uh, passwordless authentication. Uh, there's also another question. Can I have one Touch ID for my Mac Touch Bar and one for my iPad? Uh, well, obviously you do. So you can have any uh, security keys, as in you can use an authenticator key like UB key, or you can use the Touch ID, or you can use smartphones. Well, it doesn't matter. So more number of uh, authenticators are the better. So with passwordless, uh, you can use any uh, device that supports the resident keys. So that will be the only prerequisite for this. Uh, so there's another question. How would this work on iPhone or Android device? So basically we are using WebAuthn API. So uh, we have uh, implemented FIDO2 passwordless authentication support with the uh, support of Web, uh, WebAuthn APIs of browsers. So uh, with mobile phones, what you can do is uh, you can basically, so this will also, uh, the previous uh, point is applicable for this as well. So if your mobile phone is uh, supporting resident keys uh, that comes with FIDO2, so uh, you can uh, use passwordless authentication with them. So uh, basically you can use the touch sensor, the biometrics uh, with them. The user portal in version 5.10.0 doesn't support FIDO2. Well, obviously I showed this demo with uh, WSO2 Identity Server 5.10.0. So yeah, WSO2 Identity Server 5.10.0 user portal support uh, FIDO2 uh, supports, I mean, registering FIDO2 resident key supported, uh, not only resident key supported, it can be uh, anyways, uh, so, User portal supports adding security keys, security any security device. It can be uh, either passwordless supported devices or just a, a FIDO2 device that supports a U2F. So um, this has been there in our uh, previous ident server versions also. And if with 5.10.0 version, we have added the passwordless authentication capability that comes with FIDO2 as well. Integration seems, uh, so another question is, integration seems really easy. Is there any pre-configurations necessary? Well, uh, so as I have mentioned, 
uh, you just have to to use this uh, from a user user perspective user perspective you just have to register the device from the user portal and you just have to uh, use um, your biometrics i mean in in the process of registering also you just have to give your uh, you know, the biometric or the security key or any uh, security authenticator that you use to register to the user portal and then you just have to use the same exact thing to uh, log in as well so integration is pretty easy from level what you have to do is you just have to give passwordless authentication with fido2 option to the uh, application that you are configuring so it's pretty easy Do you have any support for uh, APIs? Well, of course, uh, we have built these with REST API. So we have the REST API support for FIDO2, uh, passwordless authentication also. As, uh, and uh, there's another question, as an admin, can we configure the portal to only allow users to register FIDO2 devices, not MFA or other options? well yes so what i can say is so mfa means uh so multiple factors for authentication but with passwordless authentication this is this can be called a single step authentication so you do, you don't have to give the username or password so if you take multi-factor authentication the first step can be basic authentication that's a password username password and then uh, if you take uh, fido2 as the second step then that will be uh, username password and then the fido2 authentication but in passwordless authentication you have eliminated this uh, scenario what you can do is you can simply use a uh, passwordless authentication that means passwordless authentication with fido2 as the first option so it's a single step authentication so uh, as i mentioned earlier an admin can um, configure this so that they sample uh, to the to, to the applications they want so that the user can um, log into these applications using passwordless authentication straight away um well of course uh, there's another question can we use ies version 590 for this as well what would be the difference between is 59 and 510 well we have implemented this feature with WSO2 Identity Server 5.10.0. Uh, so this will be there from 5.10.0 onwards. Uh, 5.9.0, we have the FIDO2 U2F support and also versions uh, that are below 5.10.0 have the U2F support, but not passwordless authentication support. All right, so we took in as many questions as possible and really appreciate the enthusiasm you guys have shared with us. So what we will do is we will we see a lot of requests to share um, the slides, which we will most definitely do, uh, along with the recording of the webinar as well. Uh, something else that you can be a part of is um, our VP and General Manager of Finding Access Management at WSO2, Prabhasi Radhana. He will be hosting uh, meetups tomorrow, all hosted online um, and across about six time zones as well. And the, tomorrow's topic will be on securing SPARs with OpenID Connect. So if you're interested, uh, you can simply go to the IT and Access Management page or just go to WSO2 and look for Identity Serve and you will see a link right on top saying meetups you can go ahead and RSVP and share with your colleagues and it will simply be conversations about uh, INT and access management in general and like I mentioned tomorrow it will be on uh, securing space with open ID connect and he's also hosting a webinar next week uh, on figuring out a maturity model for CIM in your organization so if you think you might be at an early stage of customer I am or at a latter stage this webinar would be a perfect one to find out where your organization is and what you can do to get to the next level to give your users a good experience um, thank you so much for joining us like we said we'll send you the recording Satini thank you so much for the great job and all the um, effort for a great presentation and thank you everyone for joining we'll see you hopefully maybe at the online meetup tomorrow bye bye